The tale of Genji Yuan Shi Wu Yu, Genji Monogatari, pronounced Edi Mano Atai, also known. As Genji Monogatari is a classic work of Japanese literature written in the early 11th century by the noblewoman, poet, and lady in waiting Murasaki Shikibu. The original manuscript, created around the peak of the Heian period, no longer exists. It was made in, concertina, or Orihan style, several sheets of paper pasted together and folded alternately in one direction than the other. Murasaki Shikibu, Zishibu, Lady Murasaki, circa 973 circa 1014 or 1025, was a Japanese novelist, poet and lady-in-waiting at the imperial court in the Heian period. She is best known as the author of The Tale of Genji, widely considered to be one of the world's first novels, written in Japanese between about 1000 and 1012. Murasaki Shikibu is a descriptive name, her personal name is unknown, but she may have been Fujiwara no Kauriko Shangzi, who was mentioned. In a 1007 court diary is an imperial lady-in-waiting. Heian women were traditionally excluded from learning Chinese, the written language of government, but Murasaki, raised in her erudite father's household, showed a precocious aptitude for the Chinese classics and managed to acquire fluency. She married in her mid to late twenties and gave birth to a daughter, Dani no Sanmi. Her husband died after two years of marriage. It is uncertain when she began to write the tale of Genji, but it was probably while she was married or shortly after she was widowed. In about 1005, she was invited to serve as a lady-in-waiting to Empress Shoshi at the imperial court by Fujiwara no Mikanaga, probably because of her reputation as a writer. She continued to write during her service, adding scenes from court life to her work. After five or six years, she left court and retired with Shoshi to the Lake Biwa region. Scholars differ on the year of her death, although most agree on 1014, others have suggested she was alive in 1025. Murasaki wrote the diary of Lady Murasaki, a volume of poetry, as well as the tale of Genji. Within a decade of its completion, Genji was distributed throughout the provinces, within a century it was recognized as a classic of Japanese literature and had become a subject of scholarly criticism. Between 1925 and 1933, the tale of Genji was published in English. Scholars continue to recognize the importance of her work, which reflects high in court society at its peak. Since the 13th century her works have been illustrated by Japanese artists and well-known Yukio-e woodblock masters. Japanese literature throughout most of its history has been influenced by cultural contact with neighboring Asian literatures, most notably China and its literature. Early texts were often written in pure classical Chinese or lit. Chinese writing, Han Wian, Kanban, a Chinese-Japanese Creole language, one Indian literature also had an influence through the spread of Buddhism in Japan. During the Heian period, Japan's original kokufu culture, lit, national culture, developed an to write Japanese literature, too. Literature also established its own style, with the significant usage and development of kana fan ming. Following the end of the Sokoku policy and especially during the increasing westernization of the Meiji era, Western literature has also had an influence on the development of modern Japanese writers, while Japanese literature has in turn become more recognized internationally, leading to two Japanese Nobel laureates in literature, namely Yasunari Kawabata and Kenzaburo O. A. Summary. Genji's mother dies when he is three years old, and the emperor cannot forget her. The emperor Kuritsubo then hears of a woman, Lady Fujitsubo, formerly a princess of the preceding emperor, Hori resembles his deceased concubine, and later she becomes one of his wives. Genji loves her first as a stepmother, but later as a woman, and they fall in love with each other. Genji is frustrated by his forbidden love for the Lady Fujitsubo and is on bad terms with his own wife Aoi no Yu, the Lady Aoi. He engages in a series of love affairs with many other women. These are however unfulfilling, as in most cases his advances are rebuffed, or his lover dies suddenly, or he becomes bored. Genji visits Kitayama, a rural hilly area north of Kyoto, where he finds a beautiful 10-year-old girl. He is fascinated by this little girl, Murasaki, and discovers that she is a niece of the Lady Fujitsubo. Finally he kidnaps her, brings her to his own palace and educates her to be like the Lady Fujitsubo, who is his womanly ideal. During this time Genji also meets Lady Fujitsubo secretly, and she bears his son, Reizei. Everyone except the two lovers believes the father of the child is the Emperor Kuritsubo. Later the boy becomes the crown prince and Lady Fujitsubo becomes the empress, but Genji and Lady Fujitsubo swear to keep the child's true parentage secret.
Genji and his wife, Lady Aoi, reconcile. She gives birth to a son but dies soon after. Genji is sorrowful but finds consolation in Murasaki, whom he marries. Genji's father, the Emperor Kuritsubo, dies. He is succeeded by his son Suzaku, whose mother Kokuden, together with Kuritsubo's political enemies, take power in the court. Then another of Genji's secret love affairs is exposed. Genji and a concubine of the Emperor Suzaku are discovered while meeting in secret. The Emperor Suzaku confides his personal amusement at Genji's exploits with the woman Oborazukio, but is duty-bound to punish Genji even though he is his half-brother. He exiles Genji to the town of Suma in rural Harima province now part of Kobe and Hyogo prefecture. There, a prosperous man known as the Akashi novice because he is from Akashi and Setsu province entertains Genji, and Genji has an affair with Akashi's daughter. She gives birth to Genji's only daughter, who will later become the empress. In the capital, the emperor Suzaku is troubled by dreams of his late father, Kuritsubo, and something begins to affect his eyes. Meanwhile, his mother, Kokuden, grows ill, which weakens her influence over the throne, and leads to the emperor ordering Genji to be pardoned. Genji returns to Kyoto. His son by Lady Fujitsubo, Reizei, becomes the emperor. The new emperor Reizei knows Genji as his real father, and raises Genji's rank to the highest possible. However, when Genji turns 40 years old, his life begins to decline. His political status does not change, but his love and emotional life begin to incrementally diminish as middle age takes hold. He marries another wife, the third princess known as Ona San no Mia in the Sidon sticker version, or Niosin in Whaley's. Genji's nephew, Kashiwagi, later forces himself on the third princess, and she bears Kaoru, who, in a similar situation to that of Reizei, is legally known as the son of Genji. Genji's new marriage changes his relationship with Murasaki, who had expressed her wish of becoming a nun Baikuni though the wish was rejected by Genji. Genji's beloved Murasaki dies. In the following chapter, Maburoshi Illusion, Genji contemplates how fleeting life is. The next chapter is titled Kumogakur, Vanished into the Clouds, which is left blank, but implies the death of Genji. Chapter 45-54 are known as the Uji Chapters. These chapters follow Kaoru and his best friend, Neo. Neo is an imperial prince, the son of Genji's daughter, the current empress now that Reizei has abdicated the throne, while Kaoru is known to the world as Genji's son but is in fact fathered by Genji's nephew. The chapters involve Kaoru and Nia's rivalry over several daughters of an imperial prince who lives in Uji, a place some distance away from the capital. The tale ends abruptly, with Kaoru wondering if Nio is hiding Kaoru's former lover away from him. Kaoru has sometimes been called the first anti-hero in literature. 6. Because it was written to entertain the Japanese court of the 11th century, the work presents many difficulties to modern readers. First and foremost, Murasaki's language, Heian period court Japanese, was highly inflected and had very complex grammar. 7. 8. Another problem is that naming people was considered rude in Heian court society, so none of the characters are named within the work. Instead, the narrator refers to men often by their rank or their station in life, and to women often by the color of their clothing, or by the words used at a meeting, or by the rank of a prominent male relative. This results in different appellations for the same character, depending on the chapter. Another aspect of the language is the importance of using poetry in conversations. 9. Modifying or rephrasing a classic poem according to the current situation was expected behavior in Heian court life, and often served to communicate thinly veiled illusions. The poems in the Genji are often in the classic Japanese tonka form. Many of the poems were well known to the intended audience, so usually only the first few lines are given, and the reader is supposed to complete the thought themselves, leaving the rest which the reader would be expected to know and spoken. As with most Heian literature, Genji was written mostly in kana, Japanese phonetic script, specifically hiragana, and not in kanji. 10. Writing in kanji was at the time a masculine pursuit. 11. 12. Women were generally discreet when using kanji, confining themselves mostly to native Japanese words Yamato Kotoba. Outside of vocabulary related to politics and Buddhism, Genji contains remarkably few Chinese loan words Kango. This has the effect of giving the story a very even smooth flow. However it also introduces confusion. There are a number of homophones words with the same pronunciation but different meanings, and for modern readers context is not always sufficient to determine which meaning was intended. The Tale of Genji, is a classic work of Japanese literature written by Murasaki Shikibu in the early 11th century. 
It is considered one of the world's first novels and is often regarded as one of the greatest works of Japanese literature. The story follows the life and romantic exploits of Hikaru Genji, the son of an ancient Japanese emperor, and explores themes of love, loss, and the passage of time. The novel is celebrated for its lyrical prose, intricate plot, and vivid portrayal of the Heian period in Japanese history. The Tale of Genji is a sprawling novel that follows the life and romantic adventures of Hikaru Genji, the son of an ancient Japanese emperor, from his birth to his death. Here's a brief synopsis of the novel from beginning to end. Birth and Early Life Genji is born to the emperor and one of his concubines, Lady Kuritsubo, who dies when Genji is still a young boy. Genji is raised by his wet nurse, but he faces rejection and loneliness due to his mother's low status. Coming of Age Despite his mother's low status, Genji is recognized for his exceptional beauty and intelligence. He rises in status and becomes a courtier, eventually earning the title of Hikaru Genji, or Shining Genji. Romantic Pursuits Throughout the novel, Genji engages in numerous romantic relationships with women from various social backgrounds, including noble ladies, courtiers, and even a Buddhist nun. His most significant romantic interest is Fujitsubo, his father's wife and his own stepmother. Political Intrigues In addition to his romantic pursuits, Genji navigates the complex and often treacherous world of the Heian court, where political alliances and rivalries shape the fate of individuals and families. Legacy and Death As Genji grows older, he reflects on his life and the choices he has made. He is haunted by the memory of Fujitsubo and the son he believes to be his own, even though the child is actually the emperor's. Eventually, Genji dies peacefully, surrounded by his loved ones. Aftermath The novel concludes with the aftermath of Genji's death, including the fates of his children and descendants. The tale ends with a sense of melancholy and reflection on the passage of time. The Tale of Genji is a rich and complex novel that offers a vivid portrait of life in the Heian period, as well as profound insights into human nature, love, and loss. The Tale of Genji is a complex novel with a richly layered plot that spans several decades. Here is a detailed summary of the plot. Book 1, Kuritsubo The novel begins with the birth of Hikaru Genji, the son of Emperor Kuritsubo and Lady Kuritsubo, a low-ranking concubine who dies when Genji is still a young boy. Genji is raised by his wet nurse, but he faces rejection and loneliness due to his mother's low status. Despite this, he is recognized for his exceptional beauty and intelligence. Book 2, The Broom Tree Genji is appointed as a courtier at the imperial court and begins his romantic pursuits. He becomes involved with Lady Rokuho, a noblewoman, and has a daughter with her. He also becomes infatuated with Princess Asagao, but their relationship ends tragically when she is married off to another man. Book 3, The Suwo Genji's romantic adventures continue as he becomes involved with several other women, including Lady Aoi, whom he marries. However, their marriage is not a happy one, as Lady Aoi becomes ill and dies after giving birth to their son. Book 4, Kashiwagi Genji's son, Yugiri, grows up and becomes a prominent courtier. Genji himself continues his romantic pursuits and becomes involved with a young girl named Murasaki, whom he takes as his concubine. Murasaki becomes the love of Genji's life, and he lavishes her with affection and attention. Book 5, The Locust Shell Genji's relationship with Murasaki flourishes, but he also becomes involved with other women, including his stepmother, Fujitsubo, whom he believes to be his true love. Genji also faces political challenges as he navigates the complex world of the imperial court. Book 6, The Floating Bridge of Dreams As Genji grows older, he reflects on his life and the choices he has made. He is haunted by the memory of Fujitsubo and the son he believes to be his own, even though the child is actually the emperor's. Genji dies peacefully, surrounded by his loved ones. Epilogue The novel concludes with the aftermath of Genji's death, including the fates of his children and descendants. The tale ends with a sense of melancholy and reflection on the passage of time. The Tale of Genji is a sweeping epic that offers a detailed and intricate portrait of life in ancient Japan, as well as profound insights into human nature, love, and loss. The Tale of Genji features a vast array of characters, each with their own complexities and nuances. Here are sketches of some key characters along with examples of their roles in the novel. Hikaru Genji, the protagonist of the novel, Genji is a handsome and charismatic nobleman known for his intelligence and artistic talents. 
He is deeply romantic but also flawed, often causing pain to those around him despite his good intentions. Example. Genji's pursuit of Lady Rokuho leads to tragedy when she becomes consumed by jealousy and curses him, resulting in the death of his wife, Lady Aoi. Lady Murasaki. Genji's primary love interest and later his wife, Murasaki is a young girl of exceptional beauty and intelligence. She serves as a stabilizing force in Genji's life, providing him with love and companionship. Example. Murasaki's presence brings joy and contentment to Genji's life, and their relationship is one of the central themes of the novel. Fujitsubo. Genji's stepmother and his secret love interest, Fujitsubo is a gentle and virtuous woman who becomes sempress after the death of Genji's father. Genji's pursuit of Fujitsubo reflects his complex feelings of love, guilt, and longing for the unattainable. Example. Genji's relationship with Fujitsubo is a central plot point that drives much of his actions and influences the course of the narrative. Lady Rokuho. A beautiful and powerful noblewoman, Lady Rokuho becomes obsessed with Genji and is driven to madness by her jealousy. She is a tragic figure who ultimately seeks redemption through Buddhism. Example. Lady Rokujo's jealousy and subsequent curse on Genji's family lead to a series of tragic events, highlighting the destructive power of unchecked emotions. Emperor Kuritsubo. Genji's father, Emperor Kuritsubo is a kind and benevolent ruler who cares deeply for Genji despite his illegitimate status. He is a minor character in the novel but has a significant impact on Genji's life and choices. Example. Emperor Kuritsubo's death sets off a chain of events that shape Genji's destiny, including his exile from the capital. These character sketches provide a glimpse into the complex and interconnected relationships that drive the narrative of The Tale of Genji. Each character's actions and motivations contribute to the overarching themes of love, loss, and the passage of time in this classic work of Japanese literature. Here are sketches of a few more key characters from The Tale of Genji. Lady Aoi Genji's wife and the daughter of a high-ranking nobleman, Lady Aoi is beautiful but aloof. She becomes the victim of supernatural forces when Lady Rokujo's jealousy leads to her possession by a malevolent spirit. Example. Lady Aoi's possession and subsequent death are pivotal moments in the novel, highlighting the themes of jealousy and the supernatural. Princess Asagao. A young princess who captures Genji's attention, Princess Asagao is known for her beauty and grace. She becomes one of Genji's many romantic interests but is ultimately married off to another man, leading to her tragic fate. Example. Princess Asagao's unrequited love for Genji and her unhappy marriage illustrate the constraints placed on women in Heian era Japan. Yugiri. Genji's son with Lady Aoi, Yugiri is a handsome and talented young man who becomes a prominent courtier. He is a kind-hearted and virtuous character who contrasts with his father's more complex personality. Example. Yugiri's upbringing and education reflect Genji's desire to raise him to be a worthy successor, highlighting themes of legacy and familial duty. Tano Chuho. A close friend of Genji's and a fellow courtier, Tano Chuho is a skilled poet and musician. He serves as a confidant to Genji and plays a significant role in the novel's political intrigues. Example. Tano Chujo's loyalty to Genji is tested when he becomes involved in a scandal that threatens Genji's reputation, highlighting the complexities of friendship and loyalty in the novel. Oborizukio. A beautiful but proud woman of noble birth, Oborizukio becomes one of Genji's romantic conquests. She is known for her beauty and intelligence but is ultimately unable to win Genji's lasting affection. Example. Oborizukio's relationship with Genji highlights the fleeting nature of beauty and the complexities of romantic relationships in the novel. These character sketches provide a glimpse into the rich tapestry of characters that populate the tale of Genji, each contributing to the novel's exploration of love, loss, and the complexities of human relationships. Here are sketches of a few more characters from The Tale of Genji. Neo, a handsome and charismatic courtier, Neo is known for his wit and charm. He becomes one of Genji's close friends and allies, often joining him in his romantic adventures. Example. Nia's friendship with Genji provides comic relief in the novel and highlights the camaraderie among the male characters. Kaoru. The son of Genji and one of his later concubines, Kaoru is a sensitive and introspective young man. He becomes the protagonist of the latter part of the novel, which focuses on his own romantic pursuits and personal growth. Example. Kaoru's quest to uncover the truth about his parentage and find love of his own mirrors Genji's own journey, highlighting themes of inheritance and identity. Lady Akashi. 
A noble woman of great beauty and intelligence, Lady Akashi becomes one of Kaoru's romantic interests. She is portrayed as a strong and independent woman who challenges traditional gender roles. Example, Lady Akashi's relationship with Kaoru reflects the changing social dynamics of the time and highlights the agency of women in Heian era Japan. Ukifun, a young woman who becomes embroiled in a love triangle with Kaoru and Neo, Ukifun is portrayed as a tragic figure. She is torn between her feelings for Kaoru and Neo, ultimately leading to her downfall. Example, Ukifun's story explores themes of love, jealousy, and betrayal, adding depth to the novel's exploration of human emotions. Suetsumuhana, a young woman who becomes Kaoru's lover, Suetsumuhana is portrayed as a gentle and loving character. She provides comfort and companionship to Kaoru in his later years, highlighting the theme of love's enduring nature. Example, Suetsumuhana's relationship with Kaoru offers a sense of closure and redemption, bringing a sense of peace to the novel's conclusion. These additional character sketches further illustrate the intricate web of relationships and emotions that drive the narrative of The Tale of Genji, showcasing the novel's rich and diverse cast of characters. The Tale of Genji is rich with themes that delve into the complexities of human relationships, society, and the passage of time. Here are some key themes along with examples from the novel. Love and Relationships One of the central themes of the novel is the nature of love and its impact on individuals. Genji's various romantic relationships, including those with Lady Aoi, Lady Rokuho, Fujitsubo, and Murasaki, highlight the different forms that love can take and the challenges it can present. Beauty and Transience The novel often reflects on the fleeting nature of beauty and the passage of time. Characters like Princess Asagao and Lady Aoi embody this theme, as their beauty fades over time, highlighting the ephemeral nature of physical beauty. Social Status and Power The Tale of Genji explores the complexities of social status and power in Heian era Japan. Genji's own status as a nobleman and his relationships with women of varying social ranks illustrate the rigid social hierarchies of the time. Fate and Destiny The novel also grapples with the idea of fate and destiny. Genji's life is shaped by a series of events that seem to be beyond his control, highlighting the role that fate plays in shaping individual lives. Grief and Loss Throughout the novel, characters experience grief and loss in various forms, whether it be the death of loved ones or the loss of youth and beauty. Lady Aoi's death and Genji's own reflections on his life as he grows older are examples of this theme. Art and Aesthetics The tale of Genji is also concerned with the arts and aesthetics of Heian-era Japan. Genji himself is a skilled poet and musician, and his appreciation for beauty is a recurring motif throughout the novel. Nature and the Supernatural The novel often incorporates elements of nature and the supernatural into its narrative. Lady Rokujo's possession by a malevolent spirit and the symbolic significance of natural phenomena like the moon and flowers are examples of this theme. Identity and Self-Discovery Characters in the novel grapple with questions of identity and self-discovery. Kaoru's quest to uncover the truth about his parentage and find his place in the world is a central theme in the latter part of the novel. These themes, among others, contribute to the depth and complexity of The Tale of Genji, making it a rich and multifaceted work that continues to captivate readers centuries after its composition. Let's critically examine the themes presented in The Tale of Genji and the examples provided. Love and Relationships the novel portrays a wide range of relationships, from passionate love affairs to more platonic connections. However, some critics argue that these relationships often lack depth and realism, with characters more like archetypes than fully developed individuals. Additionally, the portrayal of women in the novel has been criticized for being overly idealized and lacking agency. Beauty and Transience the theme of beauty and its fleeting nature is a central motif in the novel, reflecting the Buddhist concept of impermanence. However, some critics argue that this theme is overly emphasized, leading to a somewhat melancholic tone throughout the narrative. Social Status and Power The novel provides a detailed look at the social hierarchies of Heian-era Japan, highlighting the importance of status and power in shaping individuals' lives. However, critics argue that the novel's portrayal of these hierarchies is somewhat static and does not fully explore the complexities of social dynamics. Fate and Destiny the novel's exploration of fate and destiny is intertwined with its portrayal of love and relationships. Critics have noted that while the novel acknowledges the role of fate in shaping individuals' lives, it also emphasizes the importance of personal choice and agency. Grief and Loss 
The theme of grief and loss is pervasive throughout the novel, reflecting the inevitability of suffering in human life. Critics have praised the novel's sensitive portrayal of these emotions, noting its ability to evoke a sense of empathy and compassion in readers. Art and Aesthetics The novel's focus on the arts and aesthetics of high era Japan is a notable aspect of its narrative. Critics have praised the novel's vivid descriptions of nature and its ability to evoke a sense of beauty and elegance in its prose. Nature and the Supernatural The incorporation of elements of nature and the supernatural adds a mystical quality to the novel. Critics have noted that these elements serve to enrich the narrative and add depth to its themes, although some argue that they can be somewhat distracting at times. Identity and Self-Discovery The theme of identity and self-discovery is particularly prominent in the latter part of the novel, as characters like Kaoru grapple with questions of who they are and where they belong. Critics have praised the novel's exploration of these themes, noting its relevance to contemporary readers. In conclusion, while, The Tale of Genji, is widely regarded as a masterpiece of Japanese literature, it is not without its flaws. Critics have noted certain aspects of the novel that could be improved, such as the portrayal of women and the sometimes overly idealized nature of its themes. However, its richly detailed narrative and profound exploration of human emotions continue to captivate readers and scholars alike. Let's continue examining the themes and analysis of The Tale of Genji. Duty and Responsibility The novel explores the concept of duty and responsibility, particularly in relation to one's social status and role within society. Characters often grapple with conflicting duties, such as familial obligations versus personal desires, highlighting the complexities of honor and duty in Heian era Japan. Isolation and Loneliness Despite the bustling court life depicted in the novel, many characters experience profound feelings of isolation and loneliness. This theme reflects the personal and emotional struggles of individuals in a society where personal relationships are often governed by strict social norms. Class and Gender Roles The Tale of Genji offers a nuanced portrayal of class and gender roles in Heian era Japan. While women are often depicted as having limited agency, there are instances where female characters assert themselves and challenge traditional gender norms, showcasing the complexity of gender dynamics in the novel. Memory and Nostalgia Throughout the novel, characters often reflect on the past and experience feelings of nostalgia for lost youth or happier times. This theme underscores the transient nature of human experience and the longing for moments that can never be reclaimed. Spirituality and Buddhism The novel incorporates elements of Buddhism and spirituality, particularly in its exploration of themes such as fate, impermanence, and the afterlife. Characters often turn to Buddhist practices and beliefs to find solace and meaning in the face of life's uncertainties. Artifice and Authenticity The Tale of Genji explores the tension between artifice and authenticity, particularly in the realm of personal relationships. Characters often present a facade to the outside world, masking their true feelings and desires, leading to misunderstandings and miscommunications. Cultural Critique Some scholars argue that, The Tale of Genji, can be read as a subtle critique of Heian era society, particularly its rigid social hierarchies and the constraints placed on individuals, especially women. The novel's portrayal of the complexities of human emotions and relationships can be seen as a commentary on the limitations of societal norms and expectations. These themes add depth and complexity to The Tale of Genji, elevating it beyond a simple narrative of courtly romance to a profound exploration of human nature and society. The Tale of Genji is a novel written in the early 11th century by Murasaki Shikibu, a Japanese noblewoman. It is often considered the world's first novel and is renowned for its intricate narrative structure and poetic prose. Here's a breakdown of its key elements. Narration. The novel is narrated in the third person and primarily focuses on the life and romantic adventures of its protagonist, Hikaru Genji. The narration is omniscient, allowing the reader access to the thoughts and feelings of various characters. Narrative Technique. Murasaki Shikibu employs a sophisticated narrative technique known as Yukio-e, or floating world, which involves the use of multiple perspectives and shifts in time and space. This technique allows for a more nuanced exploration of the characters and their relationships. Plot The plot of The Tale of Genji is episodic, with each chapter focusing on a different aspect of Genji's life and romantic pursuits. The novel does not follow a linear timeline but instead jumps back and forth in time, reflecting the cyclical nature of life. Style 
Murasaki Shikibu's writing style is characterized by its lyrical prose and detailed descriptions of nature and the human experience. The language is poetic and evocative, drawing the reader into the world of the Heian court. Genre The Tale of Genji is often classified as a work of classical Japanese literature and is considered a masterpiece of the monogatari genre, which encompasses works of fiction, poetry, and drama. It is also sometimes classified as a romance or a psychological novel due to its focus on the inner lives of its characters. Setting The novel is set in the Heian period of Japanese history, 794-1185, specifically in the imperial court in Kyoto. The setting is crucial to the novel's themes, as it provides a backdrop for the complex social and political dynamics of the time. Dialogue the novel features dialogue between characters, which serves to advance the plot and reveal the personalities of the characters. The dialogue is often poetic and formal, reflecting the courtly language of the Heian period. Structure The novel is divided into 54 chapters, each with its own title and focus. The chapters are not numbered sequentially but instead follow the traditional Japanese calendar system, which adds to the novel's sense of timelessness. Overall, The Tale of Genji is a literary masterpiece that showcases Murasaki Shikibu's skill as a writer and her deep understanding of human nature. Its complex narrative structure, poetic style, and richly drawn characters continue to captivate readers centuries after its composition. The Tale of Genji holds immense significance in the world of literature and beyond. Its relevance, legacy, contribution, and impact are profound and far-reaching. Literary Significance as one of the earliest novels ever written, The Tale of Genji holds a unique place in literary history. It is a pioneering work that set the standard for the novel as an art form, influencing countless writers and works of literature that followed. Cultural Relevance The novel provides a valuable glimpse into the culture, society, and aesthetics of Heian era Japan. It offers insights into the courtly life, social customs, and artistic pursuits of the time, making it an important cultural artifact. Legacy, The Tale of Genji, has left a lasting legacy in Japanese literature and culture. It has inspired numerous adaptations, including plays, films, manga, and anime, and continues to be studied and revered by scholars and readers around the world. Contribution to World Literature The novel's complex narrative structure, psychological depth, and nuanced characterizations have contributed to its enduring appeal and its status as a masterpiece of world literature. It has been translated into multiple languages and is studied in universities worldwide. Impact on Society The Tale of Genji has had a profound impact on society, influencing notions of love, beauty, and relationships in Japanese culture. It has also sparked discussions on gender roles, social hierarchy, and the nature of human emotions. Artistic Influence the novel's poetic prose and evocative descriptions of nature have had a significant influence on Japanese literature and aesthetics. It has inspired artists, poets, and writers for centuries, shaping the way they approach storytelling and expression. Historical Perspective The Tale of Genji provides a valuable historical perspective on the Heian period, offering insights into the politics, culture, and daily life of the time. It serves as a window into a bygone era, helping to preserve and understand Japan's rich cultural heritage. Overall, The Tale of Genji stands as a monumental work of literature that continues to captivate and inspire readers with its timeless themes and exquisite prose. Its significance, relevance, and legacy endure, ensuring its place as a literary masterpiece for generations to come. Murasaki Shikibu, the author of The Tale of Genji, was a Japanese noblewoman and lady in waiting at the Heian court in Kyoto. She lived during the late 10th and early 11th centuries and is considered one of the greatest writers in Japanese literature. Little is known about her personal life, but her work has left a lasting impact on the literary world. Features of The Tale of Genji Complex characters The novel features a wide array of characters, each with their own motivations, desires, and flaws. Murasaki Shikibu's characters are known for their depth and complexity, making them relatable and compelling to readers. Rich descriptive language, Murasaki Shikibu's prose is renowned for its beauty and elegance. She uses rich, descriptive language to paint vivid pictures of the natural world and the courtly life of Heian era Japan. Multiple perspectives, the tale of Genji employs a narrative technique known as Yukio-e, which involves shifting perspectives and multiple points of view. 
This technique allows Murasaki Shikibu to explore the thoughts and feelings of her characters in depth, adding layers of complexity to the story. Exploration of Human Emotions The novel delves deeply into the complexities of human emotions, including love, jealousy, grief, and longing. Murasaki Shikibu's portrayal of these emotions is nuanced and profound, resonating with readers across cultures and centuries. Reflection of Courtly Life The Tale of Genji provides a detailed glimpse into the courtly life of Heian-era Japan, including its social customs, rituals, and artistic pursuits. The novel serves as a valuable historical and cultural document, offering insights into a bygone era. Themes of Impermanence and Transience Central to the novel is the theme of impermanence, reflecting the Buddhist belief in the fleeting nature of life and beauty. This theme is woven throughout the narrative, adding a sense of melancholy and introspection to the story. Innovative Narrative Structure The Tale of Genji is composed of 54 chapters, each with its own title and focus. The novel does not follow a linear timeline but instead moves back and forth in time, reflecting the cyclical nature of life. Overall, The Tale of Genji is a masterpiece of world literature, known for its beautiful prose, complex characters, and profound exploration of human emotions. Murasaki Shikibu's work continues to be studied and admired for its timeless themes and artistic merit. The Tale of Genji has been the subject of extensive critical appreciation and critique since its composition in the early 11th century. Here are some key points of both. Critical Appreciation Literary Merit the novel is widely regarded as a masterpiece of world literature and is celebrated for its intricate narrative structure, poetic prose, and vivid characterizations. Exploration of Human Emotions Murasaki Shikibu's portrayal of human emotions, particularly love, longing, and grief, is considered exceptionally nuanced and profound, resonating with readers across cultures and time periods. Cultural and Historical Significance the Tale of Genji provides a valuable insight into the culture, society, and aesthetics of Heian era Japan, making it an important cultural artifact and historical document. Innovative narrative techniques. The novel's use of multiple perspectives, shifting timelines, and intricate character relationships was groundbreaking for its time and has been praised for its complexity and sophistication. Legacy and influence. The Tale of Genji has had a lasting impact on Japanese literature and culture, inspiring countless adaptations, interpretations, and artistic works across various mediums. Critique Complexity and accessibility Some critics argue that the novel's intricate narrative structure and dense prose can make it challenging for modern readers to fully appreciate and understand. Gender representation The portrayal of women in the novel has been a subject of critique, with some scholars arguing that female characters are often idealized and lack agency, reflecting the patriarchal society of Heian era Japan. Cultural and temporal distance. Due to its historical and cultural context, the tale of Genji can feel distant and unfamiliar to modern readers, requiring additional context and background knowledge to fully appreciate. Ethical and moral ambiguity. The novel's depiction of relationships, particularly those involving Genji and his various lovers, has been criticized for its moral ambiguity and the ethical implications of Genji's actions. Translation and interpretation. As with any translated work, the quality of translations can vary, leading to different interpretations and understandings of the novel's themes and nuances. Overall, while The Tale of Genji is widely praised for its literary merit and cultural significance, it is not without its criticisms. Its complex narrative, cultural specificity, and moral ambiguity continue to spark debate and discussion among scholars and readers alike. Here's a breakdown of the strengths and weaknesses of The Tale of Genji. Strengths Literary Merit The novel is celebrated for its poetic prose, intricate narrative structure, and vivid characterizations, showcasing Murasaki Shikibu's skill as a writer and storyteller. Exploration of Human Emotions the Tale of Genji delves deeply into the complexities of human emotions, offering a nuanced and profound portrayal of love, longing, grief, and other universal experiences. Cultural and Historical Insight The novel provides a valuable insight into the culture, society, and aesthetics of Heian era Japan, offering a glimpse into a bygone era and enriching our understanding of Japanese history and culture. Innovative Narrative Techniques Murasaki Shikibu's use of multiple perspectives, shifting timelines, and intricate character relationships was groundbreaking for its time and has been praised for its complexity and sophistication. 
Legacy and Influence, The Tale of Genji, has had a lasting impact on Japanese literature and culture, inspiring countless adaptations, interpretations, and artistic works across various mediums. Weaknesses Complexity and accessibility, the novel's intricate narrative structure and dense prose can make it challenging for modern readers to fully appreciate and understand, requiring additional effort and background knowledge to fully grasp its nuances. Gender representation, some critics argue that the novel's portrayal of women, while nuanced, can be limited by the patriarchal society of Heian era Japan, with female characters often lacking agency and independence. Cultural and temporal distance. Due to its historical and cultural context, the tale of Genji can feel distant and unfamiliar to modern readers, requiring a willingness to engage with a culture and time period that may be vastly different from their own. Ethical and moral ambiguity The novel's depiction of relationships, particularly those involving Genji and his various lovers, has been criticized for its moral ambiguity and the ethical implications of Genji's actions, which may be unsettling for some readers. Translation and Interpretation as with any translated work, the quality of translations can vary, leading to different interpretations and understandings of the novel's themes and nuances, potentially impacting the reader's overall experience. Overall, while The Tale of Genji is widely regarded as a literary masterpiece, it is not without its flaws and challenges. Its strengths lie in its literary merit, cultural insight, and exploration of human emotions, while its weaknesses include its complexity, cultural specificity, and potential moral ambiguity.